buhay. The crime theory. So, the topic for course unit 8 is parang yung uh, summary ng inyong isang subject, yung crime 1 to 1. So, these are just uh, twen uh, summarize of the 22 th theories na, pwede, na itatakal nyo din dun sa mismong crime 1 to 1. So, what is a theory? So, napag-aralan nyo naman yan through the introduction of, a, of that subject. We all know that theory is any system of ideas arranged in rational order that produce general principle which increase our understanding explanation. So, eh, sa madaling salita, hindi ko nababasahin na natin yan. Okay, sa madaling salita, alam naman natin ang theory is a something that is an explanation to a something na bakit yun nangyari. Or ito yung nagiging basihan natin or parang tinatawag nating hypothesis. ba? Bakit yung isang bagay nag exist So, sa Kung i-apply natin ang theory sa, criminology, sa criminological research, ang theory ang magiging basihan natin, why do uh, someone or why does a crime would exist into a society? So, ito yung mga explanation, di ba? That needs to be proven. Always remember that a theory that is always a um, thing that needs to be proven. So, hindi lahat ng theory na ganito is applicable sa gantong oras. Hindi lahat ng theory na ganito is applicable sa lahat ng tao or sa lahat ng activities. Again, a theory, it is just a something that explains why, ba, and how, or the reason why a crime exists and why some individual commits a crime. Ganun lang kasimple ang theory. So, ayan na yan. And also, syempre, ang, kung wala kasi tayong uh, criminological theories, ha? hindi tayo makakapag-develop ng ating mga policies or lo, uh, rules and laws or regulation na tawag dito na gina, uh, ginagamit natin for our daily lives. Kasi lahat naman ng laws na pinapatupad nila kailangan binibase mo nila yan sa pinatawag natin crime theories. In order for them to have a specific law that will be effective throughout the time. So, most of the time, di ba nasabi niyo, ma'am, bakit pag ginawa yung batas na ganto, wala namang kwenta? Kasi minsan hindi nila pinag-aaralan ng mabuti. Para mas mag maging maganda ang kalabasan ng batas, kailangan ang mga mambabatas, okay, mag start sila sa paggawa ng crime theories. Or parang i-base muna nila yan dyan. Naintindihan po. So, let's start. Okay, let's start. Uh, wag na natin patagalin pa to. O, demological theory. ba? Merong naka-assign dyan. Sige nga. So, ganito ang magiging flow ng ating discussion, okay? Yung isa, uh, tawag dito, um, bago ako mag-discuss, kailangan kayo muna ang mag-present. So, kung merong mang mali doon, matatama ko. Okay po? So, demological theory. Sige nga, sino mag-present nito? Hello? Sa amin po, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sige. Paki-present po. Sir, ikaw ang mag-share screen yan. Medyo mabagal po, ma'am. Nasa YouTube po. Ah, sige. Send mo, sa, send mo dito yung link. Link. Send mo dito sa, ano, sa chat group ng ano natin. Uh, Google Meet. Friend mo na ba? Hindi pa po, ma'am. Sige. Send mo dito. Yung iba akong mabagal din ang let, pwede nang isend dito yung mga link nila and then para dito ko na lang i-play kasi ito yung present natin.
naman kayo. Ito ba to? Magka-group ba kayo? Alice Chloe Buwan? Hindi po ma'am. Iba po yan. Sinend ko lang po. Baka mawalan ah, po. Okay. 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 Kaya ba today? Hello? Yan po yan ma'am. Okay, so the, for the purpose of na hindi pa ready yung group 1, so let's start with this differential association theory. Okay, let's start. Nandito ka para mapakinggan ng isa sa mga crime theories. Let's go! Ang differential association theory na inaguyot ni Edwin Sutherland noong 1883 to 1950. Inilahad ng DAT na ang pag-uugali ng kriminal ay natutunan na pag-uugali at natutunan sa pamamagitan ng pakikipag-ugnay sa lipunan. Sa ibang explanation ng criminal behavior ay natututunan sa sariling paraan. Pwede rin na matutunan ito sa kung anong kinalakihan mo. For example, merong pamilya na nakatira sa barangay Mataluras, Bayo, Camires, Kumapumyo, Kanggasgas, at ang pamilya na ito ay pamilya ng magnanakaw. Ang mag-asawang si Benito at Benita ay ang punong ulo ng bawat pagnanakaw na ginagawa nila, dumating ang araw na nagkaanak sila. Habang lumalaki ang bata ay kinamumulatan niya ang maling gawain ng kanyang mga magulang at mga kasamahan nito, noong nasa pitong gulang na si Benity, na anak nila ay pumapasok na ito sa eskwelahan. Bawat may maiwan na bag o gamit ang kanyang mga kaklase ay kinakalkal niya ito at kung anong makita niya na pwede niyang nakawin ay ninanakaw niya. Isang araw ay nahuli ng isang kaklase niya si Benity na kinakalkal niya ang bag ng isa sa mga kanilang kamag-aral. Agad naman ay sinuklang ng kanilang kaklase si Benity sa kanilang guro at dali-dali namang sinabi ng guro sa mga magulang ni Benity ang kanyang ginawa. At pag uwi ni Benity ay kinausap siya ni Benito. Anak, totoo ba na kinakalkal mo ang bag ng iyong kamag-aral kanina? Hindi po tay, hindi po totoo yun. Huwag mong gagawin yun anak ha. Oo naman po tay. Patunay lang sa kasabihan na ang sinungaling ay anak ng magnanakaw. Dito pumapasok ang Differential Association Theory dahil kinamulatan niya ang pagnanakaw ay paglaki ng bata ito din ng kanyang ginagawa na akala niya ay tama. Salamat sa pakikinig. Peace out. Nandito. Ginawa niyo ba yon? Yes po, si Jonas po yung nag-edit. Okay, as we consider, okay, ito muna, mag-start tayo kay differential association theory. So, since nga, hindi pa ready yung demonological. So, let's start with this. So, differential association theory was advocated by Edwin Sutherland. So, as you can see dun sa video, ang sinabi niya, di ba, is um, kung ano daw yung natututunan ng isang bata or kung ano yung natutunan ng isang tao. So, advocated by Edison, which maintain that society is composed of different, different group, organization, societies, consistent group, people having criminalistic tradition and anti-criminalistic tradition, and that criminal behavior is learned and not inherited. So, according to this theory, yung mga, yung mga crimes po, okay, is may natut, uh, natutunan siya, I mean, uh, napag-aaralan siya, hindi po siya yung namamanan. Diba kung tutuusin, kung magiging tayo dun sa mismong biological perspective ng isang theory, we can consider na uh, yung mga ibang tao nagko-commit ng crime kasi daw, namana nila yon sa mga parents nila. Tama po ba? Ang nangyayari ka di kasi dito kay differential association theory, nalalaman natin, okay, o, pa, nalalaman natin or natututunan natin kung mag-commit ng crime through the process of communication and learning process includes technique of committing the crime motive and attitude. Napakadali lang ng differential association theory. It states that criminal behavior is learned diba? via social interaction with others. If naaalala nyo, diba, sabi nga nila, meron tayong co common quotation na uh, tell me who your 
your friends are and I will tell you who you are. Sabi niya, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, ganito kasi siya. Okay? Kapag sa pag, uh, differential association theory, sinasabi lang niya, it simply tells na, ang isang tao, magkukumit siya ng crime or bad behavior dahil natutunan niya yan kung sino man ang nakakasalamuhan niya. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, it explains the idea na hindi na mamana ang pagiging kriminal. Okay? Natutunan yan kung sino ang nakakausap mo everyday, kung sino yung nakakasama mo everyday. Yun ang sinasabi ni Differential Association Theory. Sabi nga niya, diba, Sutherland has been referred as the most important criminologist of the 20th century because of his explanation about crime and criminal behavior that can be seen as a corrected extension of social perspective. So, for this reason, si Edwin Sutherland was known as Dean of the Modern Criminology. Naitindihan na ba ang differential association theory niyan? Ha? Hello? Again, yes po, kapag differential association theory, ito yung mga crimes na natututunan natin dahil sa mga nakakasama natin, dahil sa mga nakakausap natin. Ibig sabihin, hindi yan inherited sa'yo, hindi yan inborn sa'yo. Naintindihan po. Naintindihan. So, for example, Opo. ikaw dati yes, matinukang student. Tapos biglang naging pala absent ka na, naging nagkakating ka na din, nag-aano ka na or what. Dahil yon ay... Ano nangyari? Dahil na-adapt mo, dahil nakuha mo, nahawa ka kung sino man ang nakakasama mo, sino man ang nakakausap mo. Naintindihan ko. So, that is differential association theory. So, tingin ko, pwede na tayo bumalik sa tamang flow. So, let's start with the, yung number one, demonological theory. So, nakita ko na. So, play natin. Madali lang naman ang demonological eh. Classmate, hindi ko maintindihan ang discussion ng mama dahil sobrang bago. Classmate, hindi ko maintindihan ang discussion ni mama dahil sobrang bago ng internet namin. Maaari mo ba akong tulungan na maintindihan ang demonological theory? Ano nga ba ang demonological theory? Ang demonological theory ay isa sa mga earliest theory in criminology. Madali lang ang konsepto ng theory na ito. It tells us that an individual is possessed. Ibig sabihin, an individual or person commits crime under demonic or evil influences. The ancient times, ang mga tao ay naniniwala ng evil spirits or demons entered the human soul and made the people commit sins. Ito yung sinaunang paliwanag regarding crime and criminal behavior. Naniniwala sila na ang person did not commit crime on its own free will because he was under the influence of evil spirits. At yan nga ang konsepto ng demonological theory. Salamat, classmate. Okay. So, tama naman. Malinag, maliwanag naman. Naintindihan nyo ba yung demonological theory? Tamang-tama naman explanation nila. Blogger ka ba, Mr. Basilio? Mga vlogger siya, ano? <laughs> o, di ba? Ang ganda ng idea nila. Ganun lang. As simple as that, pwede ka makapag-report. Or we, you can share information to us. So, demonological theory is all about uh, pina, ang pinampaniwalaan natin doon, okay? Through ancient times pa po, nung dati pa, nung wala pa tayong mga different theories, pinapaniwalaan nila na ang isang tao, kapag nag-commit ng crime, they are just being possessed by a demon. Di ba? Meron daw lang sumanib sa kanya. So, minsan na ginagawa nila, gumagawa lang sila ng rituals, yun ang punishment nila. Nagkakaroon sila ng exorcism, sometimes pungent poison. Marami yan, uh, may discuss yan dati sa, sa criminal, ano nyo, criminal justice system nyo. Ang nangyari sa kanila minsan, alam nyo, ano ang punishment nila. Minsan, bubutasan daw yung ulo nila. To believe that kapag binutos daw nila yung ulo nila dito, uh, lalabas yung spirit. Ganon. Or sometimes, papain naman sila ng pungent poison. Ayan. Kapag daw inilim nila yung pungent poison na yon lalabas daw yung spirit. So, ganun ang paniniwala nila noon na kapag nag-commit ka ng crime that you were just being possessed by a demon. So, tingin nyo kung papaniwalaan natin yan ngayon, anong mangyayari sa ating justice system. So, lahat na lang, no? Isipin natin, sinasapiensya ng masamang 
Encanto, no? Or mga demonyo. Demons. Okay. Again, that is demonological theory. So, very good for that group. Then, ha let's have now the anime theory. Kanina to. Kanina ang anime theory? Namin po ni Regine. Ah, okay. So, open natin yun sa inyo. Nasa chat na yung inyo, no? Anong limo, Ella ba? Tama po ba? Sinan mo na dito? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ito. Today, we will gonna tackle about the anime theory. My name is Ella Paula Ocampo, together with Regina Marie Albao and Alfred Dizon. The anime theory. Anime is a contemporary English which means condition or malice in individual, characterized by an absence or diminution of standards or values. When applied to a government or society, anomy implies a social unrest similar to the use of the word anarchy. This theory focuses on the sociological point of the positivist school which explains that the absence of norms in a society provides a setting conducted to crimes and other antisocial acts. Their team's theory was based upon the idea that the lack of rules and clarity resulted in psychological status of ruthlessness, frustration, lack of purpose, and despair. He also maintained that crime is an important ingredient of all healthy societies because crime make people more aware of their common interests and help to define appropriate moral or lawful behavior. For example, if society does not provide enough jobs that pay a living wage so that people can work to survive, many will turn into criminal methods of earning a living. So for Merton, deviance and crimes are a result of anime, a state of social disorder. Okay, so tama naman. So let's just have a further uh, discussion about anime theory. So if you can see, when we say anime kasi, it came from the Greek uh, name which means without and nomos law which means uh, literally without law. So, ang nangyayari sa anime theory, it is the absence of the normal. So, ano po ba yung absence of the normal, ma'am, or absence of the standard values? Ito yung mga wala tayong sinusundan. So, just imagine a society na walang rules and regulation. What will happen? Diba? Ibig sabihin, gagawin na lang nila kung ano ang gusto nila. It, it will become a disorganized, uh, disorganized uh, society. So, anime, sabi nga niya, it is a characterized by absence or diminution of standards or values. Ang anime theory, in-explain niya na wawala po kung ano man ang normal natin or ano man yung normal na sisundan natin sa ating uh, society. So, this was advocated by David Emil Durkheim. So, David Emil Durkheim, okay, this is uh, a man, okay po, hindi po siya girl. So, again, this theory focuses on sociological point of positive school which explains that absence of normals o kung wala tayong sinusundan na rules, regulations, or norms in this society will explain that, alin, marami po ang crime na mag exist For example, I will just give you an example. If itong class natin na yan, okay, hinahayaan ko lang kayo na gumawa ng kung anong kalokohan, wala kayong sinusundan na chat rules, wala kayong sinusundan na kung whatsoever, what will happen? Di ba gagawin nyo kung anong gusto nyo? Tama po ba? Hindi. Di ba gagawin nyo kung anong gusto nyo? Ibig sabihin kahit mga opya kayo, tama, kahit tama. ang pagsisend nyo sa GC nyo, okay lang. It is because nawawala po yung norms natin. So, ganun lang yung na-explain yung anime theory na kapag nawala, okay? Nawala yung uh, normlessness na yan, yung mga rules na yan, therefore, mas madami ang crime na mag-aarise. For example, wala akong pakialam sa inyo or wala akong hindi ko yung dinidisciplinar so what? What will happen? Ibig sabihin, gagawin nyo kung anong gusto nyo. Ibig sabihin, mas lalong madaming debuts act ang mapapakita. So, ganun lang ang anime theory. In-explain niya no, kung walang rules and regulation within the society, within the country or within the group of associations of any of any group of groups of people therefore, mag-i-exist po ang crime. Ganun lang siya. As simple as that. 
Parang sa pamilya lang din, kapag kaluwari hindi uh, kapag ang nanay or mga magulang hindi pinapastil ang anak or hindi pina uh, hindi pina uh, hindi tinatama sa uh, uh, sa mang, mga sa mga maling ginagawa niya or parang walang pakialam, parang bahala ka nang gawin mo. So ibig sabihin walang norms noon. So what will happen? Siyempre yung bata anong gagawin niya? Kahit anong gustong gawin niya, akala niya okay lang kasi nga wala namang rules. Ganun siya. So, ganun lang po kasimple ang anime theory. Now, next, let's have psychoanalytical theory. Meron na ba dito? Psychoanalytical. Kanino report yon? Psychoanalytical. Walang sumasagot. Let us see. Wait nga lang. So, let's start. Uh, morning. For today's topic, alamin natin kung ano ang human ecology. Wait a minute. So, let's start. For today is the psychoanalytical theory. What happened? Our topic for today is the psychoanalytical Analytical theory. My name is Antoinette Mendoza. And my partner is Ralph Jones Yuto. Our topic for today is the psychoanalytical theory. My name is Antoinette Mendoza, and my partner is Ralph Jones Yuto. The psychoanalytical theory, psychologists. have considered the variety of possibilities to account for. Mm -hmm. Agad ko na lang. So anyway, discuss ko na lang muna siya. So yung iba, ilagay dapat kasi din sa, kaya nga diba si Nadez ko, isa niya sa YouTube, ilagay niya sa YouTube para hindi tayo mahirapan today. So dahil ganon, so I will just discuss this anyway. So psychoanalytical theory, ganoon lang siya, okay? Pero papanoorin ko pa rin yun namin kasi lalagyan ko ng grade. So, psychoanalytical theory, okay, consider the uh, possibilities to account for individual indifferences. So, defective conscious, emotional maturity, uh, inadequate childhood socialization, maternal deprivation, and poor of moral development. So, psychoanalytical theory, ganito siya. Uh, we explain that uh, kaya nagko-commit sila ng crime ang isang tao, it is because they are, uh, they are underdeveloped or parang merong sakit sila sa utak. Pag, diba, pag sinabi natin psycho, it means, uh, and then, when we talk about psychological, it talks about the behavior of a human being. Diba? Psychological. Kapag naman psychiatrist, it is all about the mind. So, ano nga yung psychoanalytical theory? Sina sinasabi dito, okay, it is was, this was advocated by Simon Freud. So, it views that criminal behavior was based on the psychology in explaining approach in understanding criminal behavior. So, ang nangyayari dito, ay po, ang criminal, uh, ang crime is, is, it is a result of criminal behavior. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga behavior na hindi pa po nade-develop or parang may sakit sila. So, sabi nga ni Sigmund Freud, criminal behavior is a form of neurosis, di ba? That criminality may result from overactive conscience. Kapag naman, alam niyo mga nag-overthinking, di ba? So, yung mga taong merong hindi, hindi tama ang pag-iisip, hindi tama ang behavior, ito mismo ang cause, sinasabi niya. Uh, binibigay niya ng dahilan kung bakit sila nakakakomit ng crime. So, crime is the result of compulsive need of pa for punishment to alleviate guilt and anxiety. So, yung iba para maalis ang guilt and anxiety nila, they will commit crime. May mga ganyang tao. Sometimes din, sinasabi niya, criminal behavior is a means of Obtaining gratification of need. Ano alam ano ibig sabi ng gratification? When I say gratification, this is your satisfaction. 
Okay? Para yung iba na uh, para makuha nila yung gratification or satisfaction nila in their in their cells, ang gagawin nila is they will commit a crime. Uh, example na lang yan yung mga psychopath. 'Di ba? Yung mga psychopaths, uh, wala silang feelings or they cannot produce emotions, but they can uh, parang mahanap nila yung gratification nila pa or paano sila sumasaya kapag nakaka-commit sila ng crime. So, may mga ganyang tao. Ma, bakit ganyan may, may mga ganyang tao? Kasi nga, again, hindi po normal ang pag-iisip nila. Hindi, pag, hindi normal ang kanilang behavior. So, yun ang ginagamit ng psychoanalytical theory. So, criminal conduct represent as a display of hostility or wherein criminality is essentially a representation of psychological conflict. So, ibig sabihin, itong psychoanalytical theory, it just simply explained that why other people commit crimes? It is because they have something wrong in their mind, di ba? Or in their behavior. May sakit po sila sa utak, may sakit po sila sa behavior nila. That makes them psychotic, di ba? That makes them um, uh, psychopathic or anything that merong men, uh, mental disturbance. Uh, are you watching Flower of Evil? Uh, try to watch that. Uh, meron din naman kayong, uh, meron din kayong, um, uh, subject niyan kapag second year kayo which is human behavior and ito yung focus niya psychoanalytical theory pag-aaralan niyo yung mga different behavior ng isang tao lalong lalo na yung mga criminal uh, so it explains why do some people commit this type of crimes so ito yung mga psychoanalytical theories okay po maganda pag-aaralan ng crime kasi alam niyo the more na pinag-aaralan mo ang crime okay the more na nakikita mo nag-iiba yung perspective mo or um, parang ideas mo doon sa mga nangyayari na bagay-bagay. For example lang, alam mo yung The American Next Door, ano ba yun? Yung nauso sa Netflix, yung um, crime murder ba yun? Yung American ganto ganyan, next, boy, uh, next Door na yung about dun sa family na si Kat. O, oh, yun. Alam American mo Murder. O, oh, yun, American Murder. Uh, before yun napunta sa Netflix, uh, nung nangyayari din yun, nasa YouTube na yun. So, last year pa yata yun. Hindi ako, I'm not sure if last year pa yun na, na, na sa YouTube. Napanood ko na yun YouTube. So, nung nakita ko na ano ba yung na ano sa Netflix na yan, nung tinignan ko, ah, so ito pala yung, actually, this was suggested by my friend. Sabi niya, ah, mapanoorin mo sa YouTube to. Sabi niya ganyan. Bakit, ma'am? Sabi ko, basta tingnan mo maganda yung story nila. So, nung nakita ko, ganyan, ganyan. Ah, okay. Sabi ko. Tapos, nung nakita ko naman sa Netflix, ano ang pinapanood nila? Ah, okay, ito yung sa YouTube. Naalala ko. So, ang nangyari doon, di ba, merong, there is something wrong. Ano yung naging gratification niya para lang makuha yung gusto niya? Sige nga, kung i-apply nyo, gusto kong ipa-assignment sa inyo yan eh, pero wag na muna. Kung i-apply nyo yung uh, movie na yon or yung parang documentary na yon ano yung ginawa niyang method or anong theory? So, mamaya sagutin nyo sa akin na, sagutin nyo kung napanood nyo na, Ang kasi ginagawa ng lalaki, di ba, ganito sila. Mag masayang pamilya sila. Nakita yun sa social media. Ngayon. One day, okay, itong si lalaki, parang nagsawas sa buhay na ganon. And then, ang nangyari is, nagkaroon siya ng another fling or another woman. Which is, nung nakilala niyo yung another woman na yun, okay, napag-isip-isip niya na just to start something new. Okay? Just to start something new with that girl, with his new, new, new woman, ang gagawin niya is to eliminate na lang itong existing family niya. So, anong nangyari nung kauwi nung, nung asao niya from the airport? So, dahil yung uh, babae medyo ano siya, uh, magaling siya sa buhay. So, sikat siya, ganyan-ganyan. So, nung after niyang kauwi, ang nangyari, alam na ng babae, nakakutob na siya na parang merong something kakaiba sa, sa asawa niya. Diba? So, nung nalaman yun ng asawa niya, na nalaman nung asawa niya na, nung yung lalaki na there is something wrong with uh, with him or parang nakita niya, napansin niya na meron siyang affair, ganyan. Nung nalaman niya na alam na ng asawa niyang babae, ang ginawa niya rin, pinatay niya. Yung babae, yung asawa niyang babae, at ang mas masakit pa doon, Chappy, yung ma'am! Mga anak nila. Chappy ba ako? Chappy ba sa lahat? Hindi. Okay, baka sa'yo lang, Mr. Rico James Pabustan, kaya nga nakarecord din naman to, so you can watch it already. So, ang nangyari doon na yan. So, in order for him to make that gratification, di ba? To make that, uh, para lang makuha niya yung gusto niya, anong ginawa niya? Pinatay niya yung pamilya niya. So, tapos at the meantime, at the last time, hindi rin niya ma-explain sa sarili niya bakit niya ginawa yun. 
So again, ag this is a psychoanalytical theory. It explains why do certain people commit crime. It is because they have a mentally disturbed mind. Or parang underdeveloped ang mind nila. Okay po. So that is a psychoanalytical theory. Next, we have human ecology theory. Nakita ko na to. Ito reduce the messenger kanina. Tama ba ako? Excuse me? Tama po ba ako? Opo, ma'am. Wala siya sa ano? Wala siya sa... Tawag dito? Ma'am, pwede nga share screen na lang po, ma'am. Yes, pwede naman. Sige po. Okay. Taki share screen. So, human ecology theory was uh, developed by Robert Ezra Park. Okay po. So, it is a strong advocate for scientific method in explaining criminality, but he is also a sociologist. So, human ecology is the study. Okay lang po. Ito yung study ng interrelationship of people and their environment. So, this theory maintains the crime is a function of social change that occurs along with environmental change. Okay? It also maintains that the isolation, segregation, competition, conflict, social contract, interaction, and social hierarchy of people are the major influences of female behaviors and crimes. So, dito sa human ecology, yeah, in-explain niya na kapag ang isang tao, okay, kaya nakakakumit daw ng crime ang isang tao, it is because of his environment. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang dahil sa taong nakakasama niya, pero dahil din sa environment na meron siya. For example, hindi lang tao, di ba? So, example, sino man yung nakakasalamuan niya, saan siya nakatira? Di ba? Ano yung merong, uh, ano ang nangyayari sa society nila? So, yun, lahat ng pumapalibot sa isang tao, anything that surrounds an environment within that uh, certain person, yun ang nakaka-influence sa kanya kung bakit siya nagko-commit ng crime. So, hindi lang siya isang factor na natutunan mo siya dahil sa isang tao. Madaming factor ni lahat na po niya is either segregation, sabi niya nga, competition, conflict, social contract, interaction, and social hierarchy of people are the major influences of criminal behaviors and so that is human ecology theory it explains that people commit crimes it is because of this environmental change it is because of what is is in his surrounding naiintindihan po ba so that is human ecology theory the more na nagbabago diba? the more na nagkakaroon ng changes within his environment ano man yung na-apply niya sa sarili niya yun ang nagiging cause kung bakit siya nakakapag-commit ng crime. So, ganun lang po ang human ecology theory. So, Mr. Ano? So, let's start. Let's watch this. Morning. For today topic, alamin natin kung ano ang human ecology. Alamin natin din dito kung sino ang pasimunod sa theory na ito. The human ecology, ecology theory. is advocated by Robert Estra Park, 1864-1944. Park is a strong advocate of the scientific method in explaining criminality by the sociologist. Si Park ay isa sa mga pinakamahalagang philosopher sa larangan ng criminologia. Bagamat siya ay isang sociologist. Isa siya sa mga nagtaguyod ng mga scientific methods. Alamin natin kung sino ba talaga si Robert Estra Park. Robert S. Rofart, February 14, 1864 to February 7, 1944, was an American urban sociologist who is considered to be one of the most influential figures in early U.S. sociology. Park was a pioneer in the field of sociology, changing it from a passive philosophical discipline to an active discipline rooted in the study of human behavior. He made significant contribution to the study of urban communities, race relations, and the development of empirically grounded research methods. Most, most notably, participant observation from 1905 to 1940, part work with Booker T. Washington at the Tuskegee. Institute. After Tuskegee, he taught at the University of Chicago from 1914 to 1933, where he played a leading role in the development of Chicago School of Sociology. Park 
Park is noted for its work in human ecology, preservation, human migration, cultural assimilation, social movements, and social disorganization. Sinasabi nito na siya sa mga mahalagang tagapanguna pagdating sa larangan ng sociology sa U.S. Mahalaga din si Park sa School of Chicago University dahil dito siya ginag- dah- dahil dito niya ginampanan ang pagiging leader sa pag-develop ng Chicago School of Sociology. Madaling mga obro na istro si Park nandiyan ang human ecology, race relations, human migration, cultural assimilation at iba pa. Human ecology is the study of the interrelationship of people and their environment. Human ecology study human life and human activity in different ecosystem and different culture in the present and in the past. Further to gain a better understanding of the factors which influence the interaction between humans and their environment. Dito naman sa slide na to ay ang human ecology ay isang pag-aaral sa relasyon ng mga tao at sa kanyang paligid katulad ng mga hayop, puno at iba pang mga bagay. This theory maintains that crime is the function of social changes that occurs along the with environment change. It's also maintained that isolation, segregation, competition, conflict, social contract, interact, interaction, and social hierarchy of people are major influence of criminal behavior and crimes. Dito naman sa isang slide na ito, ay, ang theory na ito ay isang pag-aaral na kung saan sinasabi na ang krimen ay dahil sa pagbabago ng panahon. Sabi ko nga, as I discussed, human ecology theory, it also it talks about the environment itself. Kung ano man yung mga environment na nakaka-influence po doon sa tao. Kung sino man ang kasama niya, ano man ang meron sa kanila. For example, you're living in a squatter area, ganyan, di ba? So, that is human ecology theory. Next, we have somatotyping theory. So, kanina to, ito magandang ano to, maganda tong, uh, tawag dito, maganda tong topic. Kasi na-topic din to sa theories nyo, di ba? Tama po ba ako? So, what is sa matotyping? Ito. Tignan natin. What's up, criminologist? I am Sophie Make It. Okay. So, let's watch this one. What's up, criminologist? I am Sophie Make It. And I am Melmar Villalon. And for today, we are going to talk about somatotyping theory. Somatotyping theory. It is the classifying of people into types according to body build. Somatotype theory relates distinctive body types to personality characteristic and relates criminal behavior to body types. William Sheldon. He introduced the concept of body types or somatotypes in 1940s. His key ideas are concentrated on the principle of survival of the fetus as a behavioral science. He combines the biological and psychological explanation to understand the deviant behavior. We have here the three kinds of body types, which is the mesomorph, ectomorph, and the endomorph. The first one is the mesomorph. These people are athletic, solid, and strong. They are not overweight and not underweight, and they can eat what they want without worrying too much about it. They are the people who are routinely active and aggressive, and they are the most likely to commit crimes. An ectomorph person has a thin physic flat chest, the legacy through the body. They tend to look more fatigued and withdrawn. Fashion models and basketball players fit this category. 
An endomorph person has a lot of body fats, a lot of muscle, and gain weight easily. A football lineman tends to be endomorph. They are heavier and rounder individuals. Ernest Krenschmer, a German psychologist, attempted to correlate physique and character. He found that the certain body types are associated with particular types of mental disorder. We have four classification of body physique by Ernest Krenschmer. Asthenic or zyzoid type. They have a narrow shoulder. They look very sickly and weak. They are depressive and want to be alone. They are unsociable, quiet, serious, and they are capable of committing serious violent offenses. Picnic or cycloid type. They can be described as sociable, good-natured, humorous, and impulsive. These people have a slender or slim body. These people are more prone to suffer from a serious mental disorder called schizophrenia. Athletic type. It is the type between asthenic and picnic. They consider to be healthy, active, and aggressive. They are more comparable with ambiverts. This plastic type. It could be any body type but were characterized of highly charged emotional state and unable to control their emotion. Ernest Krenschmer associated this plastic with sexual offense. Their behavior and personality are imbalanced. Hope you enjoy and learn something from us. Bye! Okay, so type very good. So they use the faux cartoon ba yun? Diba? So, sa mga tayo din type uh, theory, uh, it explains that kung ano man daw yung bodies nyo. So, ganun lang siya. This was advocated first by William Sheldon. So, when we say kasi somatotypes, it talks about your fast, uh, physical body build. Okay po, kung mataba ba kayo, payat ba kayo, or uh, maskulado ba kayo. So, according to William Sheldon, meron siyang tatlo. This is endomorph, mesomorph, and ectomorph. Endomorph, ito yung mga matataba. Mesomorph, ito yung maraming muscle. Ectomorph, ito yung mga payatot. Okay, sinasabi nilang ganyan. So, ibig sabihin, okay, ito yung mga body physique wherein uh, there are different certain crimes na pwede mo daw gawin according to your physical body build. Tindihan po. So, sino ba dito yung mga ectomorph? Yung payatot. Sino ba dito yung mga mesomorph? Yung medyo healthy and mesomorph. And also, we have the endomorph. Ito yung medyo chubby-chubby. So, magkaroon tayo. Uh, and then, another uh, psychiatrist naman, si Ernst Kretschmer. Uh, yan. Ang dagdag lang dito yung dysplastic. So, asthenic, uh, katumbas siya ng ating mga yung ectomorph kanina. And athletic was, uh, ito yung katumbas ng mesomorph. And picnic, ito yung uh, katumbas ng ating um, endomorph. Okay po? Ito yung uh, ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. Picnic, ito yung mataba. Para madali ng tandaan, astonic, parang tinik. Diba? Athletic, kasi mamasal, kaya mesomorph, letter M. Diba? Picnic, mataba, endomorph, kasi kain ng kain. And the last one is, yung sinasabi niya is, yung dysplastic. Dysplastic is a combination of two. Actually, two body types po ang dysplastic. It's either uh, mataba siya, pero mamasal siya, or payat siya, pero mamasal siya. Pero hindi po pwede na magkasama ang taba, mataba siya na mapayat. Wala pong gano'n, ano. Di ba may mga matataba, na matataba, around sila, pero mamasal sila. Meron din naman na payat, pero mamasal sila. So, yun ang dysplastic. So, according to this one, okay, liliwanagin ka lang. Kapag payat ka, okay, dun kasi sa theories talaga, uh, ma-explain niya ng buo Doon sa asthenic or kapag daw ectomorph ka, kung payat ka, the most crimes na pwede mong i-commit is magnakaw. Okay? So, kapag, uh, I know that is kay, kay Ernest Hutton ba yun? If I'm not uh, mistaken? Meron bang Ernest Hutton's theory dito? So, mamaya siguro ma-explain yan. Kapag daw payat ka, ito ang, ang crime na makukommit mo is all about uh, malapit kang magnakaw. Okay? Kapag naman mataba ka, ito yung mga sexual abusers. And also yung mga nagpa-fraud. Ganyan. And kapag naman athletic ka or yung mga mesomorph ka, this type of body type uh, explains that you will uh, commit an aggressive type of crime or violent crime. So, most, more more likely, ito mga athletic or mesomorph type, aha, ito daw yung mga gumagawa talaga ng most violent crimes. So, isip-isipin nyo, tingnan nyo mga katawan nyo. Okay? Sabi nila, 
according to your body type or body build, yan ang nagagawa nyo or nakukomit yung kamay. Sa bagay, kung tutusin mo, uh, may magdanakaw bang mataba yung akit ng bubong? Diba? Baka pagkakit pa lang niya, eh, nasira na yung bubong, ano? So, sometimes, parang mer totoo naman, minsan, di ba, na-apply, syempre, mag-isip-isip din naman yung matabang yun, paano siya mapasok dun sa bahay kung maliit, maliit lang yung butas na yun. Di ba? So, that is somatotyping theory. Again, they consider their built body types as to what type of crime they will commit. So, binabase nila kung ano man daw ang katawan mo, yun daw yung magiging, uh, yun daw yung magiging crime na gagawin mo. Okay po? So, next, we have differential association theory. Kanina to, di ba? Tama po ba ako? Discuss na to kanina, di ba? Ito yung pinakauna. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, next. We have the containment theory. Meron ba dito? Ma'am, sa amin po. Okay, sige. Let's... Nasa, uh, ano po, ma'am? Sinan ko na po yung link. Sa messenger mo ni link? Ah, sinan? Hindi po, dito sa Google Meet na. Okay. Ah, Apo, ma'am. Ayun. So, hello guys. This is an... So, hello guys. This is an another episode of As a Criminology Student. So today, together with my partner Joa Kim, we are going to answer a question. Hi partner! Today we are going to answer a question and it is from Miss Katrina Gamboa. So for our question that was asked by Miss Gamboa, it is, what is containment theory? So containment theory was developed by Walker Reckless. In addition, containment theory states that a personal factor or a social factor affects one behavior or criminal behavior in committing a crime. So, ano nga ba tong ini-explain mo, partner? Para mas maintindihan at bibigay tayo ng example. Ano gusto ko sumabog, sabihin ng mga masamang mga words. Ano gusto ko sumabog, sabihin ng mga masamang mga words. So that is an example of a containment theory, but how? So as you can see in the video, the boy was so mad because the housemates pushed him so hard to be mad. But instead of doing something that he would regret, he cried instead. So that is how containment theory works. From the word itself, contain, you are containing yourself or your emotions that were caused by the other people and in that way, you are preventing crime. Yes, so ayan. So sana mas naintindihan nyo ang containment theory. Yes, partner. To sum it up, containment theory contains that there are external and internal factors that contributes a person's behavior, including criminal behavior. Yes, partner. And wrapping on another episode, I am Lawrence Bakani. Joa Kingyao. And this is... And this is... Thank you, ma'am. Yan ang nakita kong nagustuhan ko. Kasi alam niya, may example. Also, napakadali lang naman, di ba? Uh, so, uh, at saka na kung ano talaga nila yung uh, tamang example. Okay. Ang containment theory, containment, ito yung mga nilalaman mo. Or ano ang meron sa'yo. Okay? Pag sinabi natin containment, there are two factors. It's either by internal factors, ito yung dinadamdam mo. Okay? External factors, ito yung mga nakaka-influence sa'yo. So, containment theory seems that for every individual, there exists a containing external structure and protective internal structure, both which provides defense, protection, or insulation against crime or delinquency. So, minsan, kapag yung mga containment theory na yan, okay, if you could see, pwedeng uh, sasabog yan bigla. Diba? Pwede niya yan dahil sa sobrang galit niya, kung ano man yung pinaglalaban niya, internal or even in external, pwede niya lalabas yan as a crime. Diba? 
pag for example, be another example ko yon. For example, kini tim ah kini kim kim mula tong sa sakit ng lob mo, sa nanay mo, sa tatay mo. One day parang napuno ka na, ayan. So minsan hindi ka na lang maiya, pero minsan makakagawa ka na lang ng crime. So either sobrang galit mo, mapuno ka na, sinaksak mo siya or whatsoever. Ganun siya. Naintindihan po ba? Pag ganun lang ang containment theory. Okay po. Si Miss Lawrence Bakani, parang you reminds me of our uh, one of the best student and sophomore. And that is uh, Miss, yung second year, uh, yung vice president natin ngayon, that is Miss Bogna. So, nakikita ko siya sa'yo, actually. Apo, <laughs> ma'am. Nakikita ko siya sa'yo kung the way you present and the way you study, the way you behave in our class. Okay, so, very good. So, next we have the social class conflict and capitalism theory. So, kanina to? Meron ba dito? Hello? Meron po ba dito? Social class conflict and capitalism theory. So, wait nga lang. Tingnan natin yung list. Okay, so let's start. Kita nyo ba siya? So, play natin. In micro-oriented paradigm in social... Social conflict is in micro-oriented paradigm. Or... Social conflict is in micro-oriented paradigm in sociology that this society as the arena of inequality that generates conflict and social change. To a social conflict theorist, it is all about dominant group versus minority group. Ito yung mga nabubilangan ng mga nangibabaw na pangkat laban sa mga minoriyang pangkat. Society functions so that everyone or group involved can make the best use of benefits which in the long run brings about social change. Sabi dito, pinupunoan ng lipunan upang ang bawat isa ay maaaring gumawa ng pinakamahusay na paggamit ng benepisyo na sa paglaon ay magbibigay ng pagbabago sa lipunan. Sino ba si Clarmax? Clarmax, itinuguri ng ama ng social class complex theory. Kilala din siya bilang German philosopher. Sociologist, economist, at revolutionary sociologist. Okay. Nakita ba ang ating ano, PowerPoint? Na napanood nyo? So, tama naman, pero hindi lang ganun kaliwanan kasi mahina yung boses. So, social class conflict and capitalism theory was advocated by Karl Marx and together with his two associates, we have Frederick Engel and William Bonger. So, these are the proponents of social conflict and capitalism theory. So, they believe that there is a ruling class in capitalist society which is res responsible in creation of criminal law and their ide ideological basis in all interpretation and enforcement of the laws. So, sabi niya dito, all are reflected in the ruling class wherein thus crime and delinquency are reflected on the moralized surplus of population which is made up of the underprivileged, usually the unemployed and underemployed. Ang pangit ka dit, kasi dito sa ating social class conflict and capitalism theory. Di ba may mga countries tayo wherein kapitalismo ang sikat sa kanila, walang democracy or whatsoever. So, ang nangyayari nun, yung lahat ng rules nila, okay? Lahat ng batas nila, it is based on the social gain or parang economic gain. So, ang nangyayari nun, nagkakaroon ng underprivilege or nawawala ng mga privilegio ng karapatan itong mga nasa babang tao or yung mga mahihirap lang. So, a Marxist socialist on the other hand place more emphasis on working about crimes of economic gain. Sabi nga niya, he believes, okay, that profit motive of capitalism generates an egoistic personality. Hence, crimes is an inevitable outcome. Because of that, na dahil sa isang country, as ang nagiging um, parang pinaka-focus ng mood of kanilang nation as capitalism, ganyan, Therefore, nakafocus lang sila sa economic gain. So, dahil doon, di ba, dahil nga ang economic gain, okay, ibig sabihin lahat ng utak ng tao nasa profit lang, profit ng profit. So, therefore, ano mangyayari sa kanila? They will think that lahat ng kasama nila is pwedeng ka-rival nila, di ba? So, what will, what will happen? So, more crimes will 
happen uh, in economic gain. Also, nawawalan po ng karapatan ang ating mga mabababa uh, or parang low class uh, uh, society. For example, yung mga hindi kayamanan. ba diba? Yung mga hindi ganun kayaman, paano sila magsusurvive nun doon? So, ay na-explain lang ng social class conflict and capitalism theory. For those countries na, na ang nag e sa kanila is kapitalismo. So, ang nangyayari, yung nadevelop sa utak ng mga yan is all about money, money, money. So, hanggang sa makakapag-commit na lang sila ng crime. So, that is social class and capitalism theory. Next, strain theory. Kanina to, strain theory na to. Sa amin po. Okay, ito. Saan mo sinan yung sa inyo, Queen? Dito ba? Sa chat box po, ma'am. Opo. Okay, ito. Sa Facebook siya? Meron po din. Sa YouTube po siya, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Ayan. So, share this out. Kita na ba? Kita na ba siya? Hi, can you see it? Apo. Okay, let's start. Hi, Gerald. Hi, Queen. Have you heard about the crime theories? Yes, I heard about them. And you know, there is one theory that stimulates my curiosity. What is it? It is the strain theory. I want to know more about this theory. That sounds familiar. Is that the theory which Robert King Merton developed? Yes, you got it right. Do you know anything about it? Yes, Robert King Merton argues that people engage in divine behavior when they cannot achieve their goals. So does it mean certain strains or stressors increase the likelihood of crime? Exactly. These strains lead to negative emotion, such as frustration and Can anger. those emotions lead a person to do crime? Yes, you're right. There are persons who commit crimes just to achieve their goals. Oh, now I understand why some unemployed individuals are engaged in theft or drug selling just to obtain money. Also, that may lead them to seek revenge against the person who fired them. Thank you, Gerald. I am delighted that I had talked to you. I learned a lot. No worries, Queen. I hope I satisfied your curiosity. ng uh, reporting. So, gina ginawa naman nila in a way na parang nag-uusap sila. Eh, sa ano naman siya, animation. So, very good. So, the story theory was um, the advocated by Robert, Robert King Merton. So, ang dito sa story theory, ang iniisip nila, the failure of a man. Okay? The failure of a man to, to achieve his higher status of life caused them to commit crimes in order for that status goal to be attained. So, yung mga ibang tao, okay, pa dahil hindi nila nakukuha yung gusto nila. Anong gagawin nila? That will be the reason kung bakit sila magko-commit ng crime. So, lahat ng tinatawag nating frustration, sabi nga natin, yung frustration na yan, okay, yan ang nag-lead or nagko-cause kung bakit ang isang individual magko-commit siya ng crime. So, for example, katulad nga nung sinabi nila, kung, kung na-fired siya, di ba? Di ba? Kung dahil na-fired siya, eh, yung galit niya yun, di ba? Siyempre, yung goal niya is to make money, di ba? Eh, dahil na-block na yun, nang dahil sa... Uh, na-fire siya sa trabaho therefore ano mangyayari sa kanya baka yung, yung frustration na yon is gagawa siya ng masama o yun ang magiging dahilan kung baka siya magkocommit ng crime another example is kung titingnan nyo yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina yung American murder ba yun um, um, di ba yung American murder anong gusto niya? ano ba yung goal niya? is, is to start a new life di ba? yun ang gusto niya is to start a new life pero dahil nga nabigo siya 
nagawin yun dahil nga nalaman ng asawa niya anong ginawa niya in order to achieve that goal ang naisip niyang solution is to kill all his family members including his children di ba? ganun ang ating astrain theory yung frustration na yun it would lead for you to commit a crime so parang kayo for example kung kanwari nabagsak kayo sa prelim examination or nabagsak kayo during prelims na yan so ang, gust ang goal mo talaga is pumasa ang goal mo talaga is kahit tres lang makapasa ka ang nangyayari nun is dahil nga nafrustrate ka ayan, ang gagawin mo it will lead you to commit another type of devious act is either makukopya ka is either ganto ganyan naiintindihan nyo ba? Ganun na strain theory. Kapag hindi mo nakukuha yung goal mo or there is something na nakaka-frustrate sa iyo, ang gagawin mo is magko-commit ka ng crime. Naintindihan po ba? That is a strain theory. Okay po? Hello, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next It is already one hour, so magi-exit na ako. I guess ganto na lang mangyari, okay? For the uh, the next subsiding topics, yung from number 10 theory up to 22 theory, okay? Uh, Ika-copy, uh, isend niyo yung mga link ng videos niyo, okay po? Sa akin or dito sa G, uh, dito sa Google Meet na to. Therefore, mamaya magre-record na lang ako, okay? So magre-record ako ng aking discussion so para mas madali. And then, ang gagawin nyo na lang is ipapapanoorin nyo siya kinabukasan. Naintindihan po ba? Yes so, po, ma'am. So, this will be the part 1. So, the uh, part 2 is uh, parang pa panoorin nyo yung uh, part 2 nya sa kapag may free time kayo. Naintindihan po ba? Hello? Opo. Again, so this is the Opo. part 1. So, mamaya na record ko yung part 2. Okay? And then, please, ang gagawin nyo na lang sa part 2 na yan is to watch it in your free time before that next week. Naitindihan po ba? So, dahil next week is magkakaroon kayo ng quiz about this theory. Naitindihan po ba? Apo, ma'am. Apo, ma'am. Let's open your camera and let's have some screenshots. 